Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar. We'll just wait a few seconds slash a minute, maybe, <laughs> to see uh, if everyone is jumping into this webinar. Yes, it looks good already. Mm -hmm. Should maybe I put a timer on? <laughs> We'll give it one minute. <clears throat> oh, already one minute. Let's just start slowly. Um, hello and welcome to today's webinar, Three uh, Misconceptions That Keep You From Being Agile. I'm Michelle and I'm the Marketing Manager in Business Now. And um, with me today, I have uh, Lina and Jacob, but they'll introduce themselves uh, later on. Um, <clears throat> um, just some quick practical stuff already. <laughs> um, this webinar will be recorded and it will be shared with you tomorrow via email. And I'll say much more about this uh, at the end of the webinar. But most important, it is to say that you can ask questions during this webinar using the Q&A function in the bottom of your screen. You just take the mouse down and it should pop up. And if you use the Q&A uh, function, it's anonymous, so we can see it only. Um, and if you use the chat, then it's visible for everyone, but you decide. Um, and if you use the Q&A function, please uh, make sure to let us know who you are so that we can answer afterwards if we don't have the time during this webinar. But I will say we should have the time to have some questions uh, during this webinar. And we really love questions. So please, please um, ask away. Um, and I think that was all for me. And uh, I'll see you later on in this webinar. Um, I'll, without further ado, I'll give the word to Jacob and Lena. Enjoy. Thank you. Are we sharing, Michelle? Great. Yeah, thank you for the uh, introduction, Michelle, um, and welcome to the webinar, Three Misconceptions That Keep You From Being Agile. Um, we are talking about Agile today, um, and that is because when we are working with, the, with Agile or we want to work Agile, um, there is a lot of uh, of um, differences uh, from the way we're used to work. Um, and what we see when we're out, uh, um, when we're out working with our clients, it is that there can be some misconceptions uh, that actually counteract um, the agility. And that's what we want to uh, touch upon today. So hopefully we can, uh, we can, we can give you guys some stuff for reflection and and maybe even provoke you a little bit. Um, that's that's um, that's the uh, the aim at least. And I just want to add, like Michelle said, uh, I'm Jacob, by the way. That uh, feel free to interrupt. This is not uh, supposed to be only a lecture from the two of us. We want as much interaction as possible. Uh, so interrupt by asking Michelle, uh, in the, or she will be asking us in the Q&A, so just feel free, write your question, she will unmute herself and uh, give us the question. Yeah. So, just without, uh, without spoiling anything, uh, those are the three misconceptions that we have tried to conceptualize. Uh, we have tried to conceptualize uh, the conceptual co conceptualization so that we will um, we will talk about them first at a more um, conceptual level, and then we will elaborate each misconception with practical challenges and maybe some ways for you to spot those misconceptions. The first is. Uh, is uh, one we have called the trivial why. Um, and the second, it is the framework seduction. I like that word. <laughs> I like that word too. And the third, it is the cat blank for anarchy. Um, so that's what we want to uh, elaborate on today. 
Jan has uh, Lina also said that we might provoke you a little, like make the points a bit sharper than than we actually, you know, mean, but give you examples so you you get the point and and feel free then to say no 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 we don't see it that way or this never happened to us. That's the whole idea here about that we are showing you the misconceptions and we do it ourselves as well. Yes. Nobody's perfect in this world. Yeah. Um, say something quick, guys. I'm so sorry. I just want to just a, a little disclaimer here. Uh, Lena and Jacob is sitting in the same room with, but with distance. That's why Lena sometimes is uh, like so. They are together. Just, just a quick uh, disclaimer. So we're doing the distance thing, but you're you're close by. So that's just a quick disclaimer. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. But we don't want marketing close by, so she's not here. No. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> so the agenda for today, uh, we will start out with an introduction. Who is Lena and who is Jacob? Then we will move on and tell you about the purpose and the motiva motivation. Why is this even relevant? Why are we spending 45 minutes of our life here? And then we'll dive into the misconceptions. Where do they come from and how do we spot them? And last but not least, we will give you some tips and tricks and we will not give you like the solution um, because our, our point is that uh, Agile is not just one single solution, um, but we will try to give you some tips and tricks to your Agile journey that may be helping you to, to um, um to tweak your mind a little and who are we yeah. jacob yeah i'm jacob uh, i've been in business now for a few years now i've been doing a lot of um, courses teaching and also quite a few webinars uh, lately i've been doing a digital and it strategy webinar um, and i'm actually here uh, more assisting Lina because it's uh, her main idea about this agile webinar. So back to you, Lina. Uh, yes, I am Lina, uh, also a consultant as, uh, in the business now. And I've fallen pretty much in love with, the, with this agile way of working. And, and, and I think there are a lot of paradoxes um, linked to it that are that are really interesting to uh, to elaborate and to work with in uh, in practice. Um, so that's what I spent my my time on. Um, yeah, I've been a consultant for two and a half year. Um, yeah. So. All right. First slide. Well. We we deliberately chose the word misconceptions. We could have say said mistake or other things, but we think a misconception catch what we are trying to to convey to you that it, it is somehow something that you you hold on to some beliefs. That's a conception for us, and a misconception is when they are wrong. We didn't want to say wrong, but it's. It's still a misconception, even though it's shared by the majority of people. We could, and now I'm just being uh, giving you some very practical examples, you could say that at a point in time, as a human race, we all thought that there, or most people thought that the earth was flat. That was a misconception. It remains a misconception, even when it's shared by the majority of people. That's a bit how we feel about some of these uh, agile misconceptions as well. Yeah, and that's also a mo motivation for putting together this uh, this webinar because if we can uh, if we can identify those misconceptions, then we can work around them. Um, but but it it uh, it requires that we that we are aligned that that we have misconcepted something. Mm -hmm. So the second motivation for putting together this webinar, it is that agile is uh, is a pretty much of a buzzword. Of a buzzword, uh, it exists through uh, huge expectations rather than clear definitions. Um, 
So, um, so when we read about Agile, it's, um, we know what, what Agile can do for us because that's, that's how it is framed in the public discourse, but we are not quite sure what it is. Also, the challenge of, of working with, uh, with visionary buzzwords is that you'll find just as many levels of abstractions as you'll find uh, definitions. So, so we have a word here that is really, really strong. Um, and sometimes when we speak about agile in organizations, we tend to think that we are, are aligned on what it means, um, but actually we aren't. And, and, and more important, we're not aware that we aren't aligned because agile is such a big word. So we just assume we, we, um, we, we have the same, uh, same associations um, tied to it. But, but actually in most cases, it's, it's, um, um, it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. And it's such a big industry. So that, that's why it's important to to get some more clear definitions. Yes. And it's also, again, it's just, it's an important point to be aware that, that AGL exists through really, really heavy expectations. Uh, and, and that's why it's also easy to, uh, to, to, to misunderstand uh, what, what it really is about. Yeah. A bit like, uh self-driving cars lots of expectations but uh, there might be many levels in that as well yeah yeah and that brings us to uh, to misconception number one um it's the trivial why as we have named it and it's the misconception that agile equals the universal code to success um and that's exactly because we have a tendency to frame Agile through the public shared expectations. Um, that's the reason for adopting Agile becomes too trivial and too far away from the organizational context where it shall operate. Um, so it can be it can be really um, hard for for people in an, in an organization to understand why are we even doing this. Um, if we look at some reasons that organizations have uh, have have chosen for implementing agile, you can say that they're pretty trivial. And and with trivial, I mean that they don't suggest like a logical alternative. Uh, so it gets like trivial and and even um, not not pretty valuable. Um, so. And 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 the challenge the challenge uh, is with that is that that the the conceptualization of agile it gets too it gets too uh, too abstract mm. you 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 can't see you can't see the reason um, in an organizational uh, level and that we discussed this morning here Lena also that it, there there are no alternative to not having agile no. if you can accelerate. Uh, faster delivery, cheaper cost, happier employees. Why? I mean, these are all good reasons, but uh, but it's trivial. It's like having a customer-friendly organization. Who wouldn't want to have that? Yeah. And if that's your company statement, what's the opposite? Yeah. Customer unfriendly. Yeah. Yes, and again, the understanding of AGL is too abstract. It, it's it's not an, an at a at a um, organizational level that it that that it should be to to operate. So we we will stay on the visionary level. Mm. Um, it's not easy to it not easy it's not easy to all it's not easy at all to operate when when we when we don't uh, understand the why. Mm -hmm. So you can actually you can ask yourself or you can even ask your manager, um, which road did we choose not to take? Like, at which crossroad did those uh, strategic um, initiative arise? Um, wh where are they coming from? Um, I think in most cases that I have been working at, this is actually how strategy looks like. 
this is not a clear path. This is somehow something that is like emergent, many roads, and, and you can't really point to that one thing. That's the ideal picture that you think strategy is something that you that you mapped uh, at, the, at a point in time and then everybody's following that. But that's not the case as we see it. No, at I mean, we, we, we at least have a tendency to stay at that level when, mm -hmm. we, when we operate. Um, this is the real world. That's yeah. how cars drive. Yes. <laughs> So we have some practical examples. Yeah. So how to spot it here? We, we discussed that you can have too much focus on delivery and productivity, uh, meaning that uh, if you are still in, in a mindset where you measure productivity, um, you, could, you could forget that, that the agile concept is also about prioritizing. So you, can, you cannot just implement having agile and still uh, having the same productivity mindset, meaning if your managers or your leadership in the company are still measuring on the same things as they did before, things will not change. So yeah, you can run agile all you want in IT as long as we get the things faster and, and we want them on time. So you have the project triangle of uh, uh, time, uh, cost and scope, and something have to give. So if you know that from project management and, and Agile has some, some interesting thoughts on that. Also, there might be a lack of a team guidance and coaching. Um, so it, it doesn't really help with the buzzwords like we saw all the good reasons here. So you might want some help or you might want to educate your, your, in your company. You might want some outside help but it doesn't, it, it's not enough that you're just saying now we are doing agile and it's on a, no, a big company thing. I mean, you can, um, maybe uh, a good example is, is also those, uh, those um, um, how do you say it, like Heliadl. Mm, some half-baked? <laughs> half-baked uh, implementations where we want to be agile, but uh, we leave uh, the teams along with the consultants and we just spread those buzzwords and but but the facilitation is is not quite there. Um, that could be an example. I've seen I've seen too many times that agile is something you do in the software uh, production phase, not something we're doing in the whole delivery of the of the software implementation. And then it becomes a, a very narrow scope, more in the development scope. Yeah. You can do that all you want. Uh, guys, I have a question. Sure. Um, so um, there's a question that says, so KPIs are ir irrelevant? Question mark. Oh, that's a good question. That's a good question. But no, they are not. It, uh, it depends on the, the KPIs. You have some points about measuring, right? Yes. Um, but it, it, it's, it's about measuring the right things. Um, so for example, um, we, when we work agile, we are measuring the velocity, for example. So that could be uh, a, um, a, an expression for productivity instead of, for example, I don't know, hours. Mm. I would say it's just that there are some measures uh, that are very delivery and productivity oriented that probably comes from another paradigm that, that is not as, as applicable to measuring a, an agile team. Yeah. We are measuring the definition of done. We are measuring the, the, the way that we handle the stories. We are measuring the, the rate of progress in terms of delivery or story points. We have a point also about not confusing the, the story points and the hours. But we'll come back to that. I like that question. Yeah. OK, thank you. But uh, also because it, it's one of the most interesting paradoxes with Agile. Uh -huh. And uh, the last one is that, that you can actually risk having dysfunctional teams and demotivated uh, team members that don't know why they use these Agile techniques. Why are we standing here for 15 minutes? Okay, they said it was a stand-up meeting. I was just standing up for 15 minutes. So they, they become uh, demotivated. If they think they should be a, a, a team that can make their own decisions 
and you have a manager doing all the decisions. You, you are not a, a self-organizing team. So, so the AI techniques uh, should be used to something. You cannot just say, well, we have a, a Kanban board where I'm telling you what to do. That defeats, defies the purpose. Yes. And I've seen that. I won't mention names, I won't mention companies. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, and to, uh, to the second misconception that we call the framework seduction, um, that is where agile in the organization is defined as frameworks and processes. Um, and that's, yeah, we tend to be a bit framework seducted, seducted when we talk about agile, agile. So let's implement safe and let's implement scrum and then we're there, right? Um, and, and again, it, it's pretty natural for us human beings because it's easier to just do something. And also because all that you can read about agile, it is, it is uh, those how-to guides and, and it will, um, if you implement agile, you will be promised a bright future. So it is, it is natural, um, mm. but it is challenging because the means becomes the target. And when we are, when we are working with uh, with means, we 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 kind of limit ourselves. Uh, whereas we, if we work with targets and goals, we get more flexible. And that's pretty much what agile it is about. You you forgot to mention that we also want a bit of uh, kanban and some DevOps. Then we have a full plate. Yes. So it, it's, it's challenging because process sometimes tr trumps the progress. Um, we have some more examples of, of that, but, but when, when, we're, um, when, when we are um, concepting agile as, as, a, as frameworks and processes, um, we, we, we tend to forget the empirical process control. We, we tend to forget that it's actually about about improving our process and not just doing something because it, it, it says so in a framework. And back to the, the, the last slide about the progress that the progress is a productivity measure, but maybe the, the whole agile journey is about also finding out things that are not working as well and, and putting the spotlight on those. Yes. And here, the understanding of agile actually gets a little bit too concrete because we um, because we associated with with something that 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 we know uh, pretty concrete like the Spotify mo model or or yeah um, Scrum and Safe. It's about taking those elements that works mm. for you and then then um, facilitate what what's working and evaluate on it, um, but not just just a framework or a process because it's. Uh, it's a it, it's it's an agile framework and i would say it goes as well for idle which i know a bit about that you can also implement or having a, the idle framework too literal in the organization yeah. taking the change management process quite at the, at the words that are described in a framework and a framework is not supposed to be as literal it's not too concrete it's a best practice things and i think kind of the same points that we are making here. Can I ask a question? <clears throat> yes. Um, super. Um, like who in the organization um, owns the agile or like owns agile? I would say, um, thanks for the question. It's, it might be a trick question for me because actually agile, I would say, should not have a clear ownership. It's it's more of a journey, but there might be some people involved in it. So it's more of a mindset than, than a thing you can own. You can own a ServiceNow application, for example, and be the process owner or product owner. Uh, having an agile owner, it's a bit hard for me to, to subscribe to. But I think it's important that, that, that the team owns their own process um, I agree. So, so that uh, the 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 ownership for agile it is facilitated in the teams um, because it, they are closest to the information and and they need to be 
uh, able to uh, mm. to act to to actually take action upon that information. Oh yeah, if that was the the meaning that it should be in the teams, yeah, good point. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you, guys. Do you want to take the last point, uh, Lina? Or should I move on? Uh, yes, it's just um, the contradictions in in methods and mindset that can happen when you. Uh, when 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 we are, um, are concepting agile as a as a framework only because we we have those methods described everywhere um, and then we 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 actually use the names but we kind of tend to do what we have always done mm. and that's a challenge. Well, so how to spot this misconception? We are agile because we have a scrum board and a daily stand-up. So that doesn't make you agile saying now, now we have a scrum board or a Kanban board or saying we do daily stand-up and we're just standing up for 15 minutes. That's not, a, that's not the purpose here. Uh, every event is followed because the scrum guide say, says so. That's too literal. Also, I would say I've seen many uh, meetings taking exactly 15 minutes and you're kind of measuring after 15 minutes, we're done. I mean, come on. If it takes uh, two hours, it's too long, right? But if it's between 12, 15, 20 minutes, who cares? The other is too literal. It's just to limit the, the time for each participant. So don't worry. Don't be too strict on that. But again, I think it, 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 it's, it's, um, it's down to, to being aligned in the team on what is the purpose of this meeting. Mm -hmm. It's not a status meeting. Um, it is a meeting to create transparency and 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 if we if we want to discuss anything, that then let's do it at a later point. Yeah. Um, but my point is also that the success of the meeting is not that it stopped after fifteen minutes. Yes. And that was not the purpose of the meeting. Yeah. And, and I agree. We, we had this discussion. It's a hard. It's a tough discussion that story points uh, is is uh, equal to hours. That's a misconception because in that way, you don't get the meaning of the story points because the, the story points are there to, to, to have a relative impact on how you do things. And you cannot just say they're equal to one hour because one team might have 20 story points that they can manage in a sprint, others have 40. It depends on their level. So you cannot just say that the other team that have 40 sto story points in their sprint is twice as effective as, as the other team. So that's a very long discussion. I know you probably have some questions to that. And, and it's so easy to, to fall into that misconception because you say, here we have a perfect uh, equivalent of one story point equal one hour equal X amount of Krona, then we have the price as well. Back yeah. to waterfall. Yeah. And also, um, a challenge it is that the technical agility and the product ownership is uh, it, it gets neglected because we really want to um, we really want to um, shine in the processes um, so we're not paying enough attention to uh, to actually um, um, eliminating technical um, theft and and to product ownership to make sure that we prioritize the right things and that we use outcome as a filter mm. um, because we're too um, we're too obsessed with with the with the process okay i'll move a bit on i think we have uh, discussed this about the unproductive meetings the yeah. agile uh, can be exemplified via the very popular safe scrum spotify model uh, and and also i've heard uh, people uh, could be from marketing, I'm not saying it is, saying in our department, we cannot use agile methods because we don't develop products. And you have to challenge that because you always hear that it's a very fine framework, a very fine idea, it just doesn't fit us. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, let's move on. Yes. The last misconception that agile is the carte blanche for anarchy. Um, that it becomes pretty much the excuse for not structuring or governing. Um, um, and it is the excuse for skipping change management and, for example, other risk assessments, that it, it becomes the excuse for not documenting properly. 
Mm. Um, that that is also a challenge because actually when we when we're doing agile, it takes even more governance, but at at, at another level and and in another way. Mm. It's just we're doing the governance again and again and again and again. It's not the the absence of documenting. I've heard so many times that uh, no, we are not documenting because uh, we are doing it agile. Yeah. And uh, we were kind of joking this morning, Lena, that we are we're doing an agile preparation here. Well, because we did it in the morning. That's <laughs> maybe not the best example. So yes. don't, I mean, this is also somehow becomes a, a thing that if you put agile in front of it, it becomes good, right? So can you talk about agile time management? No, that doesn't make sense. Agile wage negotiations really doesn't make sense. But I mean, don't put agile in front of everything. I think it's good. No. And the way you, I spot this, it is that planning is not considered valuable. Mm. Um, it's not valuable that we sit down together in the team and plan for the next uh, weeks. Um, and it's it's the prioritization is kind of uh, neglected. It it's not structured. We don't know which filter we use for prioritization. It it happens no, really so you, randomly. You gave a good example this morning here about the prioritization or the lack of it. Um, <laughs> yes, that that it comes from from the from the business, for example, and there are no process. So the the development team gets just um requirements in all the time and maybe requirements are are linked um but five per different persons are working on the different requirements and then we'll find out okay those are actually linked if we have linked it from the beginning we could have uh we could have uh spent half the time of it because uh because we didn't have the um the disturbances and mm. And we we had we had the alignment on it. Yeah, I, I think prioritization is a key here to to making making it work. And also, a Kanban board should be a very um, a very neat picture of moving things from uh, to do, doing, done, maybe some other stages. But if it's just a mess with all kinds of uh, interactions on the Kanban board, then it, it doesn't really help you as well. No. Um, yeah. And also a Kanban board is not just, I've also seen that a Kanban board is, is an excuse for not having the, the, the rules in the team for how we're, how we're, um, we're working with each state. What does it mean when a, when a story isn't ready for testing or in testing mm. or in, in awaiting release? What does it mean that we actually consider those things and we're aligned of those things? It is, mm. it is actually important to to get the flow that 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 we need i've also seen people just you know moving stuff around on the kanban board without having any uh, central uh, structure of it and saying well uh, at least i moved the stuff here and well you still didn't do it <laughs> or uh, we didn't know so a good rule i am not saying it should be that always is that you you gather together either virtually or physically and you decide on how to move stuff from one lane to another yeah that's a good rule. Yeah, great. Yeah. Okay. The last one is kind of pointing to ourselves as consultants that you, you cannot just hire a scrum master to clean up and establish structure. It would be nice. Yeah, but yeah. All right. So just some tips and tricks on your uh, agile journey because um, we're not just sitting here and saying, well, it's so easy to be to be a consultant and then just see how people are doing things the wrong way. I mean, it's it's really not the, the purpose um, uh, of this. It's just, again, to to provoke a little and to to have you guys um, maybe think about your own practices um because those under those misunderstandings it sometimes it's it's because we the organization or the majority of people in the organization doesn't doesn't really um understand the depth of agile so take the time to really understand it i can say that it's 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 a whole world opening up um so i can really um um 
subscribe <laughs> yeah subscribe <laughs> um that that it's um that that it's a great uh, benefit and it's great investigation um and then pay attention to the misconceptions you can do that once you once you understand um the depth um and then yeah mm. you can try to facilitate the agile mindset and the agile way of working in the organization and i feel upon a, a, a very nice term that i didn't know before that also don't fall into the trap of doing a waterfall shaming so don't say uh, everything waterfall is just bad everything agile is just good yeah take take it as step by step and realize that you, you cannot just implement agile and then you're there it's it's more of a journey and it starts with the leaders and starts with the with the management i would say to 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 trust in this process yes and an important one fall in love with the uh, with your problems in the organization and and not the solution um because when when working agile most of the method, methods like actually for example scrum it is actually a way of of um of shedding light on your challenges in your practical work and to try to eliminate or actually handle them um and and i think that it it it, it gives you uh, some some interesting tools when you try to uh to fall in love with the problems and, and not just just uh, wanting to find a solution uh, to them. Um, try to try, yeah, be curious on, on the problems. And facilitate a culture with a dynamic with a dynamic how where we actually where we can um, act upon uh, our actions and 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 improve improve and where we um where we have a culture where it's 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 great to learn mm. and we learn from our mistakes and here we come back to the measurement so they are important it might just be different measures yes there is a tendency to see agile as 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 a way of working when we when we when we can't predict anything really and, and that's also that's also true, but but as we as we are working agile and as we're maybe using Scrum, you can actually predict a little bit. You can say how much are we how how much story points are we de delivering, for example. But but um, we need to measure it in order to to predict it. The transparency could come through some good use of the Kanban board or the Scrum yes. boards. The visibility also between teams. Yes. And be brave because. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Be brave because it is a whole new way of working. Um, it's it's um, yeah. It's 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 not um, how we're used to uh, to operate organizations. Um, from our, yeah, we're not raised to uh, to be agile. <laughs> most of us. See, I did that on purpose because the last one is. Be patient. So take your time. Make make sure that that you don't have too you know unrealistic uh, expectations of what this agile journey will give you. Yes. Uh, so yeah. And also be be ready to empty your backpack because to learn the principles and the mindset behind agile. We need actually to to unlearn some of our current behaviors. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's also good point. point. I, I love that you were really impatient, Jacob. Yeah, 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 yeah. come now. <laughs> Before she finished, and then your point was be patient. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was uh, contradictions. I was trying to make it as something I did on purpose, but I didn't. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I will uh, shut up now. Back to you. It was like a perfect uh, transition to me talking again. <laughs> um, thank you very much. <laughs> um, yeah, we. I just want to just quickly look if we have some questions just to uh, to uh, end sort of that part and then we can go on to the boring part. Um, but there is one question about like, so how much does it cost and how long does it take to make an agile implementation like the very 
relevant question, uh, uh, but probably really hard to to answer. Uh, yeah, should I give like the political answer? Uh, it depends. <laughs> no, I would say again, like saying who owns Agile, it's probably the wrong way to look at the Agile to say, how much does it cost? Because then you think of it as like a box, a solution that you get here and you're not asking the right questions. What will it do for your organization? Will it give you greater, better employees, better products, better dialogue with your customers? So um, I, I would refuse to answer, uh, give you an exact price. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> there is actually um, one more question and it says, how do you, I, I guess you two define um, agility or sorry, let me just agile. How do you define it, you two? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and how long do we have? <laughs> Um, no, I, I can um, I can add some words. Um, I would say that agile it is about handling and in best case eliminating dependencies that are um, counteracts our flow. Um, and it's about it's about breaking silos, um, organize around products and and the value stream. Um, and it's about structuring a process for teams that allows for the empirical process control um, where they can con constantly improve their way of working and have, have the, uh, the, the dialogue and the communication around it and the necessary mandate to, um, to, to, to change redundant practices. Um, mm. and, and I would say that that the more people who actually understand and vouch for Agile, the better chance to succeed. Um, I don't know if that was just, um, it was not like a pretty clear definition, but but that's what I understand from it. I think it was a very Agile explanation. <laughs> very good, to the point. And then it's good. It sort of also proves why it's so easy to have misconceptions. Yes. Why it's hard and it is kind of abstract right so um i think you you sort of nailed it making it a bit more concrete um, yeah but i think it's down to also to the it, it there is a, a huge um um task for the organization to to facilitate and communicate this why are we doing this i i have um experienced that 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 organizations are actually implementing scrum to create uh, more um, satisfied um, her, her colleagues, um, that that's actually the goal. Um, and I actually, I really like that. Um, yeah, um, there's one more question. Uh, any suggestions on how to use story points? As, as a measure of velocity, and, and it is, it becomes something that you within the team can work on. So it doesn't really matter if you have 20 or 40 velocity points for your sprint. What matters is that you, you have a kind of a refined agreement that what is a story point. So for me, it's a relative yes. estimate. And to, yeah, to estimate the, 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 how do you say it? Like the pieces of work mm -hmm. um, in relation to each other. Yeah. Uh, that, that's also an important uh, thing. I yeah. think one good good way to use story points is like having one, three, five, and eight as yes. as the numbers because then you can see okay this is an eight, uh, this is only a three, and if you have two people differing in opinion, or uh, yeah, I've even seen people using uh, different things than points because it's so easy to equivalent to to our saying okay this is a rabbit, this is a giraffe, but that might just be too much yes. for some. But, no. but that's yeah, and experiment with it and see see what 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 works. Yeah, and and how how, do, how, how does which uh, method work for you? They say also like a, uh, the person added sort of like a complexity question marks like what about the complexity? I I think that could, that is hard to capture with one measure, but you could say this is a um, we we cannot agree whether this is an eight or a five in story points, then that might be uh, an invitation to say, okay, it's too big, then slice it down to two. Yes. Because if it's too complex, then we might want to chop it up. Yeah. And it's all, it, it, it's, it's, um, 
um, it's also a question of um, making like um, shed a light on what we do not know. Um, so, so why is this complex? W what are the missing pieces in, in, in this task that we need to, uh, to, 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 um, uh, how do you say, like, uh, clarify before mm. we can actually work on this? Good point. Sorry, this is a very, very cool uh, and very great question. Thank you very much. Uh, we yeah, need to thank you. wrap up um, here. Um, I'll just launch a quick uh, poll here. Um, it would mean uh, the world to us if you could just quickly fill this out. It's just super easy questions. Um, I don't know if I launched it. <laughs> you did. Uh -huh. No, no, I think I did. Um, yeah, so it's just um, some questions like the relevance and uh, if you got what you thought you would get. And it, yeah, it's really important for us to get better to get this uh, feedback. And um, I also just want to say uh, thank you very much to Lina and Jacob. It was a very interesting webinar. Um, I, I think like this really gave some food for thought uh, around agile, which was uh, sort of the point of it all. So that was really great. Um, and uh, let me just check my checklist to see if I got everything. And yeah, as I said in the beginning, the recording will be um, sent to you tomorrow in your inbox and also some other great links to where you can find other content and sort of our LinkedIn page, YouTube channel, all those places where you can find previous webinars and so on. And um, yeah, just always go to our LinkedIn page and follow us there if you want the newest content and the newest knowledge or what, like what's going on in the industry and how a business now looks at these things. Um, yeah, we're really excited to have you uh, uh, in joining our webinars and all the other stuff. Um, so thank you very much for doing that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think that was all for me and uh, from you guys. Uh, so let's uh, wave and say uh, have a, an awesome day. And thank you for taking a break to reflect. And thanks for all the good questions. I like your participation. Yeah, thank, thank you. you guys. Thank you. Bye bye.